And we find ourselves at the stadium that played host to Super Bowl 52, the wondrous U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. It can certainly get loud inside this building. And just a few moments ago when the Vikings were introduced, it was downright shaking in here. They are set for football as the Vikings get ready to do battle with Carson Wentz and the Philadelphia Eagles. Now it's the all-purpose back. This is Darren Sproles. Five yards on the game's first play, second down. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. A false start penalty, and now they're back to needing 10 yards on second down. Delayed give to Sproles. They follow up the gain of five by only getting one there on second down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. Shotgun now for Wentz. And that is incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. On fourth down, out is the punter Cameron Johnston to boot it away. Marcus Sherrill's back deep for Minnesota. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Play fake, Cousins. And this one hauled in by Rudolph. That throw good for four. It's second down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there, and now it's third down. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice, getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Cousins now setting up the screen for Cook. Good contain, no gain on the screen, and it'll bring up fourth down. So unable to get any yardage at all off of the screen there on third down. And ordinarily on third down, that's when you want to bring pressure. You get all your guys who want to get after the quarterback. But how about the patience they showed? Read the play, snuffed it out, and made a nice stop. Cole quit on to kick as he sends it away. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Eagles will be backed up deep to get the drive started as they take over first and 10. The football going back over to the Philadelphia Eagles, who, as we mentioned earlier, now 3-2 and two after the Week 5 victory over the New York Jets, taking care of business there 31-6. to six. By the way, very interesting. They are 11-0 all time against the Jets. The Jets have never beaten the Eagles. So now you look ahead for this ball club at 3-2. They'll go to Minnesota, to Dallas, and to Buffalo. Very tough stretch. All three teams above 500. And circle that game at Dallas. Remember, Dallas got off to the 3-0 start, now 3-2. The Eagles were 1-2, now 3-2. And, and the NFC East is wide open. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion. So here's second and four. 
Now a two-time 1,000-yard rusher for the Bears. This is Jordan Howard. And yet again, he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Great job by this Vikings defense. A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. There to knock that one away defensively, Eric Kendricks. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. Returnable for Sheryls. A big boot that time. 57 yards the official distance. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession, see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got to look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. See if they open things up. Let's see what the defense does here too after a good stop. He was brought down by Kamu Grugge Hill. For Dalvin Cook, if the early part of the season is any indication, it might be a two-horse race between he and Christian McCaffrey for the rushing title in 2019. And the Vikings, they have not been shy about using him. And he's responded with a 100-yard game seemingly every week, including that Week 2 game against the Packers when he rushed for 154 yards. Now this one complete on the slant route. That one, a first down pickup of eight. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Cousins gives way to Cook, and he'll take this one for about four up to the 40. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Uh, give to Cook out of the gun. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 16 yards, a first down. And there we see an early burst that makes him one of the leading rushers in the league. Well, I want you to know, I listened to you yesterday when we were watching film. You said, write down the word vision for him. It was on display there, wasn't it? It certainly was, because he allows the blocks to set up in front of him. And if that continues, it will be a long <laughs> afternoon for those guys trying to play some defense. Oh, and now some space to operate. 12 yards there, first down Vikings. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. They'll wind up with three yards out of that, and it's second down. Second down, Cook. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. A gain of 13, it's a first down. A much different second drive here, Charles. They go three and out the first time. This time, they've been able to sustain something downfield. And that's what often happens. You get the game started. You know, you have to get your footing underneath you. You have to get used to the flow of the game, the speed of the game. And sometimes that first drive is more of a probing drive. It appears they found something here in the second one. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. 
So now then the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. They'll try to throw now. Cousins. He gets this one into the hands of Dalvin Cook. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. That play was well covered. Just tried to check him down. Unfortunately, not able to find any yardage on that one. Now from the nine, here's second and goal. Now Cousins. That'll be complete to Cook. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. But he's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Now Cousins toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. It is tough to complete passes against zone defenses. The windows that you see open, they shrink pretty rapidly. How about being able to hit a moving target against a zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball? Not easy for any quarterback, no matter the situation. And there, the defense won the battle. Bailey's kick is good. And the Vikings have a 3 0 lead. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. This one taken from the seven. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Eagles offense back out onto the field. They've had it twice. They punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, Everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up the first down and change our momentum? Here's a handoff to Sproles to start the drive. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. You ain't doing nothing today. You ain't doing nothing. Here's Sproles. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Four yards the pick up, first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. It's brought in by Jeffrey. It's caught by Aguilar. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went you went backwards on the yardage. It hey, kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. To throw, it's Wentz. 
That's caught by the big tight end, Dallas Goddard. Here we go. Here and this go. is going to turn into Here another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 40. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because there should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. <laughs> Throwing his wins. And that's complete to Jeffrey. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Alshon Jeffrey, 40 yards. And the Eagles have taken the lead. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. That was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. 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 <laughs> Super tall. 12 yards there. First down, Vikings. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. That's right, baby. They don't want it. From the gun, it's a give to Cook. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. They're running it. Play action now. Cousins. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now Cook. He'll get about four here. Down to the 43-yard line. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. A tenth carry in the game for Cook. And he takes it down to the 40 with a pickup of four. 
back-to-back four-yard runs. Now look, man, if they just do that all the way down, field ball ends up in the end zone, but that's a little difficult to do. Yeah, I think now third and two, that defense ready to stiffen up and stop that run. So third and two, this quite possibly four-down territory, though, if they're stopped. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And he's taken down inside the 30. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. Here's Madison running on first down. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Nigel Bradham brings him down. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on, right, and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. He's got Smith here. And they'll get this down to the 10. 15 yards on the play, first down. He's a rookie, and you don't want to get hung up on the word potential. But when you see him make catches like that, you keep thinking to yourself, he's good now. He's got a chance to be great with plenty of work. Cousins now hitting on 80% of his passes in the early going. 8 of 10. It's first down. On the carry, it's Cook. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. They'll try again on second and goal after going backwards to the 12. To throw, Cousins. And he's got it. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. A touchdown saving tackle there. Now it's third and goal. Hardney nice sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really that's really a whole lot cool. of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, we're going to sell the go. Just go. And let's see who's faster. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. This is a long drive offensively. Wouldn't you hate to end this with just three points? Doesn't it feel like during a ball game you have certain narratives going on and there's certain drives that seem to take on just a bit more importance than others? This feels like one of those, doesn't it? To me, three point. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scooped up. And nothing but daylight ahead. He's at the 50. He's at the 30. 20. And he'll score! Touchdown, Eagles! As his guys are in for six. And the Eagles able to push further out in front. That score was not a game clincher by any stretch of the imagination. But the other team now has to be careful to not let this game begin to slip away. Elliott on for the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. Their deficit is 11, 14-3, and needing to get something going here as they come up on first and 10. Yeah. 
Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 24. They start the drive with Cook. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. From the 27, Cousins. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver. And it'll bring up third down. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, Big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Now Sproles. 12 yards on the return that time, and the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the table and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. They'll begin the drive with Howard. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Now it's Sproles. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Now Wentz on third down. He sets to fire deep, and that's caught inside the 35. Last play, they didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Now they gain all those 40 yards here. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make the play on the football. Draw play. This is Sproles. And he'll run straight into a wall of tacklers at the line of scrimmage. It's second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. They'll run it with Sproles. About three yards there to the 27. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. They got to get to the 20 to keep the drive alive on third down. From the gun, it's wins. And that'll wind up incomplete. Bold play call there. Now it's fourth down. They're going for a receiver there. Already has one touchdown in this first half. A second one not to be. I like where their headspace is, though. I mean, I really like the thought process, right? You got a guy who's already scored one, right? You want to go back to him, continue the hot hand, and make them adjust to you defensively. I like what they were trying to get done, even though they weren't successful. So that's a seven-play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. Yeah, things were a little leaky in the beginning on that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to their goal line, things stiffened a little bit, forced the field goal.
After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field. On He's got the lane, and there he goes. Touchdown, Vikings. Delvin Cook, 75 yards, as his guys are back within a single score. Not a whole lot to recap on that drive. Just one play, 75 yards to the house. Yeah, it's a long way to go. And remember, rarely is it a straight line 75 yards, too. Got to have a little extra in there. So whatever the final number is, a well-deserved seat on the bench, a little oxygen if he wants it as well. Extra point up and good by Bailey. And that slices the lead down to 17-10. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns 14 yards there and an eagle first down one of the selling points at the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play Wentz off the fake handoff to Howard he'll hit Jackson complete a good pick up there 26 yards Okay, what can't Deshaun Jackson do? All right, we know about the catches. We just saw another one there. Also gets involved in the return game, and he can break big plays like that. We've seen him do it throughout his NFL career. We have. What are you, are you thinking of anything in particular? Yeah, I'm, I'm still remembering a certain Giants punter <laughs> not following orders, and Deshaun Jackson made that big-time return all the way back for a game winner in that one. I still remember seeing the looks of disbelief on the Giants' sideline. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Second and nine. Wentz. Screen pass to Sproles. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Carson Wentz with two first-half touchdown passes. And the Eagles able to push further out in front. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Yeah, you're so right because you really need the rush 
to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, whoever the screen guy is. And, of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield for the touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And coming off a one-play drive that was so deflating for the defense, what, what's their mentality? How do they rally here and stop this offense? Well, hopefully there's some determination that sets in because I, they weren't ready to go on the last one. Give all the credit to the offensive guys for getting it done, but to allow a run of that. Into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked off by Rodney McLeod. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Eagles defense gets a pick six TD. Partner, what we just saw, that's a great example of a team that was really amped up. They've been playing so well, yet they didn't get overexcited and have a bust on defense and gave up a big play. Instead, they created their own big play with a pick six. This one may be over. Yeah, it's just the first half, but that lead has swelled to the point where you're wondering if it is over already. Elliott good with a PAT, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This will be taken in at the one. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And they gave up the pick six. And now they'll be looking to right the ship here. Now as a quarterback, are you a little more cautious this go around? You should be, just because after what you gave up. But you can't be so cautious as to just really take things in and now you're not going to pull loose enough to give your team a chance to score. But you still have to be careful because those defensive guys, I know the reputation defense guys can't catch. All evidence to the contrary in that last possession, though. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they've looked lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Cousins, that one into the hands of Thielen, complete. The reception good for seven. It's third down. One of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. They went with the dive look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he's on to punt for Minnesota. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Sproles, the return. 
A good return there, call it 13 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And out now come the Eagles. You've got under a minute to go here until halftime. you got the good size lead. No need to do anything crazy. No, there really is no need to do anything crazy. The smart play, go ahead and take your lead into the locker room and then try and add to it in the second half. But there's a part of me that looks at this and says, first half going my way, I have a little bit of a cushion. Let's go ahead and try and extend things. If you've got some good plays drawn up, you might want to think about them right here. An ideal beginning of the drive there is they'll get 20 and a first down. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. Wentz now on first down. Completes it to Aguilar. And he is down at the 48. A pickup of four that started at one 48-yard line and ended at the other. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. Pressure comes, and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. Derek Barnett able to maneuver in for the sack. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Another tote for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Cook. Nine yards on the game there, so from second and 19, now we've got a third and 10. Well, if you like the guys who run the ball, you're enjoying watching this. But the other guys, especially the defense coordinator, trying to figure out an answer on how to slow down the running game, I think maybe starts to call more blitzes because you can call run blitzes in order to try and get more people to the point of attack. To throw it is Cousins. Open man is Thielen. It's complete. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. A big third down pickup of 20 yards. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Here's a throw that's taken in out of the backfield. A gain of four on the play, and that'll bring up second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. They go play action. Cousins. That's complete to the receiver, Thielen. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagles' 36. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll throw again, Cousins. And this is Cook with a grab. First down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Again, it's Cousins. It's complete to Diggs. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagles 21. 
You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Cousins going to come up on a first and ten, and he's hit on all five of his pass attempts on this drive so far. Fletcher Cox there for the tackle. What an advantage having a elite guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. Check 52 to Mike. Coming this way, coming this way. Here we go, here we go. Here we go. Throwing on second down. Cousins. And Diggs has it. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. 12 yards there and a first down. Cousins on first down. This will be caught at about the six. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Three yards is the gain that time. Second and goal. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. And that'll get him halfway there as he takes it from the six to the three-yard line. Yeah, baby. Yeah. I don't have to stretch for this one. This is four down territory. They've got to get it in with the deficit that they're facing. Absolutely. It's not the fourth quarter, but still, you, I think you, you can't be thinking three here. No, if you do that, you might as well go ahead and fold up on this one. But I don't think they're built like that. Third and goal for Cousins. Open man is Treadwell, and he's got it for the Minnesota touchdown. The three-yard touchdown pass, and the Vikings are able to close the gap just a bit. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency yet relaxed enough to get it done. Bailey got the extra point, and the lead will be cut down to 14. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This fielded at the two. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So here are the Eagles now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. So first and 10 now from the 30. Watch the screen, watch the screen, watch the screen. Slap, slap. Working from the gun, Lentz. That's caught by Jackson. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Call it no gain on the dump off, and it's third down. Well, the stats that matter on this play don't help a team very much, unless, of course, you're playing defense. If you're getting points per reception, you got a reception, but yeah. no yardage. Great job by the defense, though. They, they read through that one. They read through it, gave up no yardage, and people got credit for tackles. Pretty good deal. Wentz to throw on third and one. And this is going to be incomplete. 
And that's a crusher right there. Had his man open for a first down. Threw a fastball when that wasn't necessary. Incomplete pass. When are these quarterbacks going to learn? You don't get extra points for how hard you throw the football. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. And he didn't quite have the bag spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Second and nine now from the 21. Mike 53. Hey, pick it up, defense. Let's go. Now Cousins here on the bootleg. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Brandon looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let, let's face it, that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And that will be incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And out will come the offense as they take over. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and give these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Again, they'll run it again at Sproles. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. 15 yards on the play, first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. On first down, they run with Howard. And he'll be corralled out across midfield, down to the 45. It's an Eagles first down on a gain of 11. Good push up front and that run in between the tackles. Let's play the leverage game here. Offensive line just got lower than the defensive front, and they were able to get their pads on them and move them backwards and create space for their running back to roam. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Now a first down run is going nowhere. He's going to be dropped in the backfield, a loss of two. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. Anthony Barr got a real education at UCLA in playing not just his normal position of stand-up outside linebacker, but down defensive end. So he had to incorporate a variety of moves, take on bigger people, so he learned great leverage while he was there. That really helps him when he's trying to stop people running the ball. Born in South Bend, Indiana. Thought about going back to go to Notre Dame, but you're right. Great career at UCLA and now a great career in the NFL. 
He's been quiet today in the passing game, just his second catch. Yeah, and people have to come up with schemes to limit him, and, and what a lot of teams do, they'll double him, you know, use a linebacker underneath, a safety over the top. Sometimes they'll just take a corner, maybe their third corner if he's a bigger guy, and put him on a man-to-man -to, -man to try and limit his touches. Just keep mixing it up, give him different angles, different looks, like a good boxer does. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 28. Alshon Jeffrey so dangerous even when a defender's near him. He's got such a big body, ability to run, positions himself well, excellent control, and you're exactly right. Even if people are draped on him, he often comes up with the catch. He really symbolizes what people are looking for in receivers in today's NFL. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game against them, but tally that one on the side of the defense. Do you think maybe, possibly, it could be a little bit of a changer for them? Maybe not a game changer, but a little bit of a momentum one that maybe they can string together some pretty good plays and slow them down. He gets them a little over half of what they need, and now they're looking at a third and five. is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Shotgun now for Wentz. And that is incomplete. Well, those two have hooked up for a touchdown once already in this game, that time unable to find the completion. Yeah, it just appeared they wanted to get him out into open space and try and get him the football. As you mentioned, unable to connect. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. This to make it a three-score game late. The kick by Elliott is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets them three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. 10-play drive, but they stiffened when they got close to the goal line, made them kick a field goal. And for the offense, 10-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal, but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. And throwing here to start the drive as they connect left side. They get 14 there. First down, Vikings. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? A first down throw for Cousins. Johnson's got it complete. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Give him nine there on the first down completion. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together and he catches it and goes over the sideline. Well, he challenged the play. It did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player. You threw it yourself but it didn't go your way. 
at the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination on whether to actually challenge the play or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident. And then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. Yeah, and when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And when it comes back the other way, you have to regroup. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 41. Cousins again. Throw left side on target to Thielen. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Call that a very strong gain of 24. Cousins going to come up on a first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Draw play, Cousins to Cook. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that'll make it second and 12. At the 19-yard line. On play action, Cousins. And his throw is incomplete. He was looking for his tight end there, Kyle Rudolph, and it's third down. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Third down, Dalvin Cook. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. Big boys down there in the trenches and a nice play to stop them cold. Nothing there. Yeah, when you talk about big boys, you talk about those defensive tackles, those nose tackles. They're not just big, they're immense. And what a big-time play there. And Bailey able to knock it through. And that will close the gap down to 14. Well, with that field goal, you can argue they needed to get back within two scores, and they did indeed do that, but still a pretty uphill battle. Still got to take two fourth-quarter touchdowns to get back into it. And as you and I know, that's a tall order against any NFL defense. They're going to need their own defense to make some plays as well to give them an opportunity. Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Here comes Eagle offense now as they get set to take over here. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> <laughs> not one that I've the pass there over the middle to start things out. Now the ball comes loose, and the Vikings pick up the football. And they are going to bring this one back. It's a fumble return, a scoop and score for the Vikings. This defense, Charles, they needed some type of a spark to help get them back in this game. I think they just got their spark. No doubt about it. And you know that's all they discussed. How can we get ourselves moving again? How can we get our team going? This definitely qualifies. Extra point up and good by Bailey. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter.
And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. They'll be looking to make amends for the events of a moment ago. A fumble return for six points. You absolutely have to protect the football. That's got to be priority number one because margin for error is starting to slip away. And now it's down to a one-score game. Winston, the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 26. It's brought in by Jeffrey. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. First play of the drive, lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. Wentz. This short throw caught by Goddard. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. It just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. From the gun, it's Wins. Aguilar has it. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. It's a gain of 16 and an eagle first down. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. On first and ten, here's Wentz. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. On second down, it's Howard, and he'll be brought down right at midfield after a gain of only a couple. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. They'll try to run for it with Howard. And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. It's an Eagles first down on a gain of 11. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Looking to throw on second down. Wentz completes it to Aguilar. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 14. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as 
I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Wentz going to lead his guys up first and 10, and he's hit on all five of his pass attempts on this drive so far, and he'll get about three just outside the 10, stopped at the 11. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. And once again, they go with Sproles. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Howard all alone in the backfield on second and goal. He'll get it up the middle. And he's in for an Eagles touchdown. A five-yard touchdown run. And the Eagles able to push further out in front. On that sideline, they're saying that was more like it. The first down run went backwards, that time into the end zone. And I like their little bit of courage in play calling, too. Because after an unsuccessful run, especially one where you lose yardage, you oftentimes go right to throw in the football. They came right back with a running play, and it paid off handsomely. Elliott good on the extra point, And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder. It puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Now a throw downfield is taken in by his running back. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. 12 yards there. First down, Vikings. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. Now this throw caught left side. He'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Give him 18 there and give the Vikings a first down. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Now Cook, he's got it off the draw. And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Kirk Cousins last year started all 16 games but only led the Vikes to just one fourth quarter comeback like he's trying to do here. On second and seven, Cousins is going to let this one go deep. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. 
Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. On third down, Cousins. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Eagles defense able to hold. So now with a two-minute warning coming up fast, that puts a mammoth dent in their comeback hopes. I like how you phrased it. It's a dent because there's still opportunity. They've got to get the ball back on defense, obviously twice. But guess what? This thing is not close to being over. They need to go ahead and play it out. Not over. As you said, two-score games still. That throw good for four. It's second down. And they'll try to squeeze in one more play here before the two-minute warning. Watch a slap, watch a slap, watch a slap. Second down now. It's Howard. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Again, it's Howard. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. Whistles now in a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 1.51 left. A good run by Jordan Howard, and now another first and ten. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half, to about the 39. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Here we go. Here we go. Running with Howard. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Just a couple on the ground there, and that's going to bring up third and about six. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. Now Wentz on third down. It's caught by Aguilar. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 22-yard line. Going old reliable there to the slot on third down. And the slot position has become the bane of just about every defense's existence because how do you cover? Do you go with a bigger guy to try and use size? Can I go with a, try go with a quicker guy and sometimes even get out quick there? Very difficult to match up with that slot receiver. That's why they keep going back to him. And he's had the hot hand. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world and get it done, 
<laughs> How happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. From Minneapolis, so long, everybody.